Well, today we're here to talk about uh, the benefits of being involved in the CDAT program, and we're really lucky to have Fiona Morrison with us. Uh, Fiona has worked uh, and been involved with CDATs in a number of different capacities over a, quite a long period of time, so really keen to hear a lot more about her experiences. So, Fiona, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So, could you start uh, by telling us a little bit about your professional background? Sure. Um, I've been involved, I started off as a youth worker and I've been involved in community and community development for 25, 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And in, in terms of your involvement with CDAT, can you give us a, 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 a brief summary of uh, how you've been involved in uh, different CDATs in different capacities? Sure. Um, well, it's, it's been about 20 years I've been involved. Um, back in 2001, I think not long after the drug summit, the, the Community Drug Action Team was a, a, um, an initiative to bring government agencies and communities together to tackle issues around drug and alcohol and the negative impacts of that. And we, um, uh, I had just moved to the Central Coast and joined a youth service there. And at that point, the Premier's Department was coordinating all the Community Drug Action Teams and um, it involved quite a lot of um, high-level um, government agency representatives. The mayor, the, the local council was there, the local chief um, of police was there. And um, it, was, it was great as a youth worker to go along and be part of that and to see and understand everything that was being done to help the community. Um, so I represented the youth service there as a youth worker. Um, and uh, that was the first year or so. And then um, I remained involved. I then um, got a role with the local council, working in youth services still. And um, then in the next couple of years, it, um, the Community Drug Action Team program moved to the local health district. Um, so we remained involved. Um, and at that point, it, um, it proliferated. So there was about uh, four Community Drug Action Teams that my um, youth services team were involved with. Mm -hmm. Um, I was the team leader and I was always very supportive of being able to um, have my staff engage with the local community activities that were um, happening. We had three youth centres, so we had a lot of resources we could um, do to help those CDATs that focused on working with young people. Yeah, that's great. So you would have, over the years, seen quite a lot of uh, changes take place as the uh, CDAT program has evolved over that time. Yes, I think we were very lucky at that point. Um, we had um, a great deal of support from the local health district. Um, they had one dedicated officer that came along and did a lot of the admin and organised us and, and freed us up to do a lot of the hands-on activities. And we did a whole range of different things from um, skate competitions to awareness days and interactive activities, that kind of thing. Um, then um, it moved to the uh, Alcohol and Drug Foundation um, and I actually ended up getting a job with the Alcohol and Drug Foundation as a senior um, community development officer mm -hmm. responsible for community drug action teams on the Central Coast and down here in Sydney as well. Yep. Yep. So that was, um, that was great. As a, as, as a program I'm, I was passionate about anyway and knew a lot about yep. um, to take on the role and help that transition. Um, it was different and um, I think I was still very committed to supporting those existing community drug action teams and also to build new ones. Um, we ended up with a regional CDAT on the Central Coast that was able to coordinate um, the sharing of resources and to do the slightly larger events. Um, so that was really helpful. Okay, that, that's, that's really good to know. Thanks for filling us in on, on that. The um, I, Mainly we're here to talk about the benefits uh, to the individuals for getting involved. And it, it, it's, uh, it's without question that the community benefits from the involvement of uh, people in the CDAT. But I'm keen to hear about, from a personal and professional point of view, what uh, has been uh, a benefit or advantage to you for being involved in the CDAT program? Yeah, I think, um, one, personally, I, um I find that if you have a concern about something, it's good to be active around that concern and feel like you're doing something to be part of the solution. Um, so, um, and being a youth worker, I've been involved in a lot of activities and events and, and helping raise awareness around um, things. And, and so people can make informed consent um, so, and informed choices around what they do, um, particularly with, around drugs and alcohol. Um, obviously my initial focus with Young, with, with young people, but uh, um, now um, I've also taken on 
a new CDAT on the Central Coast. I'm the chair of the Erina CDAT. Mm -hmm. And we're focusing on um, older people and uh, how um, alcohol and also prescription drugs impact on, a, on an ageing body. Um, it's uh, supported by Erina Rotary Club. And that's something that the we've got quite a lot of former health um, uh, staff members as part of the Rotary Club. And they're very conscious of um, the lack of awareness that people have around taking their medications or how um, alcohol can affect the body differently as you age. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, again, I'm coming back to that awareness and people can make informed choices. So um, that's part of my passion as, a, as an individual. And I think that helps rather than getting concerned or worried about things, if you can be part of the solution. Uh, professionally, I think um, I love the fact it's a, an interagency approach and that's working directly with community as well. So um, uh, uh, one of the models we had at King Cumber was that the, um, the different organisations, the youth service, the neighbourhood centre, the local school, a range of different um, organisations contributed their staff to come along and, and do sort of the committee work. But when it came to the skate comp that we ran, it was all hands on deck and it was all the local community members, the volunteers from the neighbourhood centre, the young people who came to the youth centre, teachers from the school. So it was always really um, a very broad based engagement by the whole community. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's wonderful. So I guess what you're saying is from, from uh, in, in your experience, from a personal point of view, it's, it's about being able to make a difference, to be able to respond to a need and not Absolutely. just sit back and, and, and see a problem. Uh, yes. occurring to be able to be part of, as you say, to be part of the solution. Yes, and I think also when you see all those different agencies working together, it's really heartening that they're not working in silos, that you know that they're all connected and they're, they're having those conversations and they do want to make a difference collectively as well as in their own professions. Yeah, yeah, because I, that's something we hear a lot about is encouraging cooperation and collaboration uh, in in various uh, areas of work and, and life, um, but to actually see it happening mm. and to see what can result positively uh, when it really does happen is uh, can be really gratifying and, and, and inspiring, no doubt. I think so. I mean, I, I, I now um, lead Volunteering Central Coast and I work with a lot of volunteers and a lot of organisations that involve volunteers and I just see the power of that um, and how people being involved in their own communities um, and, and making a difference um, by volunteering their time. Um, I think we've seen in several crises recently how it's also important for those different agencies to come together and support with their volunteers and to work collaboratively on one issue um, to build resilience in the community. And the more that you know who, who you live next door to and you know who, um, who's working in your local community, the more resilient we are as a, as a, as a society. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about uh, one particular activity that uh, that you've been involved in that kind of highlights for you the um, the benefits that can accrue to individuals and to organisations through their involvement in the CDAT program. Yeah, I think um, one that comes to mind and, and one of my favourite type of projects is an intergenerational project. Um, the King Cumber CDAT um, was looking at issues in a, a nearby suburb, Copacabana where there had been a bit of um, uh, conflict between young people and older residents. Um, and we felt quite a bit of a misunderstanding that the young people were being pretty boisterous. Um, there was a, a community campaign to not have a skate park there. The council were looking at developing one. And um, obviously I was working with the council youth service at the time, so we were pretty pro uh, skate park. So we engaged with the um, Neighbourhood Watch, the Progress Association in Copacabana, as well as the local neighbourhood centre to look at um, the positives that a, a, a skate park could have. In fact, um, having it right in the centre of the, the suburb where everyone was there and could see the kids is a better way um, of managing any antisocial behaviour. Mm -hmm. So um, the skate park was built and as part of that, the CDAT um, engaged with the Neighbourhood Watch and the Progress Association New Services to actually um, put on an event, a launch event, which became an annual skate comp. Mm -hmm. um, the CDAT supported it, had a lot of information um, and drug and alcohol awareness interactive activities because all the families came to watch the, the young people do their skate comp. Yep. And um, it became fantastic. It actually... Um, ended up being uh, the, the uh, initiative that 
uh, created a, a whole range of different skate comps across the Central Coast, mm -hmm. still going to this day, it's almost 10, 15 years later, um, which is fantastic. And again, they're very much community events and a great opportunity. The police would come along and they'd have their community liaison team there and it's a, a way of breaking down barriers. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up with uh, uh, the oldest uh, youth worker on the Central Coast, maybe in New South Wales, 93-year-old Bonnie. Um, she was actually always quite pro young people, but she was on the neighbourhood watch and some of her colleagues were not so keen on young people, but they um, they got out of their comfort zone, they came down and they uh, helped out at the skate comp and there were some really strong bonds between the young people and the older people there. And I think, um, the, so they ended up feeling quite protective of young people <laughs> and vice versa. And I think that creates a, a, an opportunity to have a conversation and to, um, to, to build resilience and um, confidence that in young people so that they know they can reach out if they're having issues. Um, they also know where to go to find information and, and um, if older people are worried about their children or their grandchildren, then they, again, they, they feel empowered to know where they can reach out for help. Yeah, and, and that addresses a lot of the, uh, the concerns that, that uh, CDATs have, apart from being obviously a really great example of uh, community working together uh, to make a positive contribution uh, and, and that notion of then opening up the lines of communication so that the young people in particular know where they can go to get help, advice um, and, uh, and support uh, in the event that they might be experiencing problems which may be associated with drugs or alcohol, may be associated with other things as well. Absolutely. And I think part of those those activities, we're really looking at, at developing and supporting young people so that when they are stressed or anxious and they might reach for some sort of substance to help them alleviate those feelings, that they know there are other alternatives. Um, they know that, that um, reaching out, talking to someone um, or finding other ways to, um, to manage their stress uh, and anxiety. We had some very popular programs at the youth centre that were um, music based or sports based. Obviously, the skate comp's probably a bit of both of that. We used to have a lot of the music um, down there as well, have live music that some of the bands would come and play at the skate comps um, and have the other avenues that they can um, engage in that uh, um, help sort of um, help them deal with those difficult feelings during their adolescence. Well, a wonderful example, and uh, it really does highlight the, uh, as far as I can see, the, uh, the benefits that people can experience by uh, getting out there doing something to make a difference, to as you say, be part of the uh, part of the solution, and uh, a good way of doing that is uh, by getting involved in in CDATs and the things that CDATs have to uh, have to do. So, Fiona, thank you very much for your time. It's been really, really useful. Thank Thanks. you.